Hello there! Today I want to show you how I had to remove a feature that I spent hundreds of hours developing. But first I want to mention one leftover thing from my last video. Nearplane clipping. Thanks to a comment on my last video I found out about GLDEF clamp which works perfectly. As you can see in my little demo biome there is no more flickering. A few weeks after the video I decided to start working on the most important graphical feature. Lighting. For lighting I decided to go with flood fill lighting, basically what you see in Minecraft and most Minecraft clones. If you followed any Minecraft clone project you probably already know how it works. And the actual propagation algorithm isn't relevant here anyways. Now we have one light value per voxel. To render the mesh we can just sample the light value from the voxel grid with linear interpolation. To avoid sampling its own light value, which is usually zero, the sample point is offset by the phase normal. The result can be baked into the mesh and is updated when needed. And interestingly, this also gives us ambient occlusion for free. But wait! What's happening to my precious voxel models? If you recall, my voxel models use parallax ray marching. More simply put, they are just boxes with perspective texturing. Now, the light data looks correct for the surface, but that's completely wrong for everything inside the model. There is no easy way out of here. Instead of baking the light information in the vertices, I need to calculate it for each pixel. This requires storing the light data on the GPU, and there simply isn't enough VUM for that. So I would need to find a way to either compress the data, or upload only the data that I actually need. That's an absolute nightmare. But I did it anyways. And in an absolute miracle, it only caused a 10% slowdown and a 20% increase in memory. And as you can see, voxel models look correct now. There's just one little problem. It looks like shit for everything else. That's so annoying! This got me thinking. Do I really want voxel models like this? Do I really need voxel models like this? The parallax ray marching is definitely a cool rendering technique. And definitely faster than rendering triangles. But it's not fast enough. I would love to have voxel models for grass and flowers, but it's too slow for that. And that's after I spent months trying to optimize it, trying to get every last bit of performance from it. But I just can't make it fast enough. If it was just 50% faster, it might be good enough, but I just can't get there. I probably stared at these few lines of code for tens, maybe even hundreds of hours. I made countless versions of it. I even ventured into the forbidden lands of micro-optimization. But nothing works! And if I can't have voxel grass and flowers, if I need to support triangle models anyways, then why even bother? If voxel models are used rarely, then I can just use regular triangle meshes. It wouldn't make a big performance difference. So, I give up. No more parallax ray marching. I spent way too much time on it, but deep down I already knew that it would come to this. It's just too difficult to maintain parallax ray marching alongside other graphical features, like lighting, ambient occlusion and even mip mapping, which I made a whole video about. In fact, now that it's gone, I could quickly implement anisotropic filtering, which is a further improvement over regular mip mapping. 
I still need to implement support for triangle models, but I'll do that in a future video. With that out of the way, I think the lighting turned out pretty good and you can do some fun stuff with colored glass and sunlight because I decided to support RGB sunlight. This does make lighting quite slow and that's why most Minecraft clones just use one channel for sunlight, but I have an idea how I might make it faster. I'll tell you more about that if it actually works out. That's basically it for improvements I made in the game. Of course, I also made some internal changes and a ton of bug fixes, as well as struggling with multi-threading. But these don't seem worth mentioning in detail. However, there are some things that I would like to share regarding this YouTube channel. My channel has grown a lot after my last video, which almost got 90,000 views. That's more than I ever expected to get. <laughs> And shortly after that, my old crafting video blew up completely, reaching 100,000 views in just a single week. But it was pretty bad timing from the YouTube algorithm there, giving me an influx of new people eager to try the crafting system, while in the rewrite you can't even use tools yet. Even worse, the entire world was black because I didn't implement sunlight yet and I just wasn't expecting so many people to test the game. I couldn't even spend much time on fixing it because I was answering comments on YouTube and Discord and helping people run the game. And beyond all that, I also had to work on my bachelor thesis and additionally I got sick for a few days. So it took me a while to finally implement sunlight and at that point, the big wave of people was already slowing down. I also want to quickly mention what I want to do in regards to ads. I decided to go with the minimum amount of ads possible, which is more than I want to put you through, but YouTube doesn't give me many options. I could disable it entirely and I don't really need the money, it's not a lot anyways, but then I fear that YouTube wouldn't want to recommend my videos as much. They are a business after all. I also won't take any sponsorships, I just can't morally justify manipulating you to buy stuff that you don't actually need. That's it for today. I know you still expect that terrain generation video, but that will have to wait. While mostly done, there are still some issues that I didn't get around to fix yet. And I also want to finish some other things like making lighting faster and adding triangle models. So it will be a while. <laughs> Goodbye.